This is the Good Neighbor Podcast, the place where local businesses and neighbors come together. Here's your host, Jeff Gardner. Welcome to another episode of the Good Neighbor Podcast. Today, we have another good neighbor on, Joe Rimaldi with Casa Polita Cleaning and Concierge. Joe, welcome to the show, man. How are you? Thank you, Jeff. Thank you for having me on your show. I'm very well. How about yourself? I'm doing good, man. I'm looking forward to this conversation. The audience doesn't know that you have worked with some of our colleagues in Best Version Media, done a little bit of marketing, got your business out there, but I don't want to spoil anything. So let's go right into it. What is Casa Polita, Joe? What do you do? Well, as it says in the name, was we pretty much uh, do anything with regards to cleaning home and concierge. It's all about um, getting to know the client and what their needs are, and we can provide it. Um, we can do everything that they need from, well, of course, our specialty is cleaning, but um, we can do pretty much anything else after that. And if it's uh, repairs around the home, um, painting, uh, we, we are very good at taking popcorn off ceilings and and cleaning it and up and and uh, getting it looking great by finishing it off. We can help with yard work, uh, even meal preparation and um, uh, companionship for the elderly, the disabled. It's all about helping people. We would really want to serve as the community and that's I'm, my background. Uh, and that's how Casa Polita came to be. It's quite an interesting story actually, but I was never an entrepreneur until Casa Polita was really born um, my background is 35 years in policing, but in that policing, that mm-hmm. time, in, in, in that time, I got to know what the community needs, especially people that are in need and, 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 and the solutions that would make their lives better. And, uh, I thought that that would be a way that after I retire, that I can still give to the community and, uh, and even again, working with, uh, uh, charity, uh, organizations like that as well. So. Um, it's, it's really, I'm not really an entrepreneur, but yet I'm still about people. And that's really our motto. It's, uh, people before profits. And, um, I put my clients first. I put my, um, staff a very close second. I put the community at large third, and then if I can make any money at the end of the day, great. But, um, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm retired. So. Uh, I'm just doing this because I just enjoy doing something. Uh, I can't sit around and do nothing. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, my second question was about your story. So thank you for already diving deep into that. So first off, you have something on your arm there, Joe. What What is that exactly? No, I think it's... Oh, think the it's- other arm. Well, you didn't. And you didn't introduce Campino. Campino is our uh, team mascot. He's also got the position of director of fresh air. And fresh Director air. of Fresh Air. Oh, so what does that entail exactly? Well, we at Casa Polita are very pet friendly. So we believe in only using products that are safe for birds. Um, because if it's safe for birds, it's safe for everybody. Because as you know, maybe know, in years gone by, in the coal mines, they used to bring a cage with a canary or a, mm-hmm. a bird into the mines with them. And if the, some, if the bird took sick or died, that was their first sign to get the heck out of there because there's something in the air that could hurt them. So the, the birds, because of their elaborate respiratory system, they'll be the first ones to tell you that something's not right. So if you can use a product around them that's eco-friendly, that's around them, you can use it around anybody that's entirely safe for them. And what, sorry, what's his name again? Campino. So Campino makes sure that everybody's healthy, that the cleaning products are on point. He takes care of that. He's like your safety advisor exactly. and director of fresh air. <laughs> director of fresh air. Um, and and it, it took us a while because Casa Plita never used any eco-friendly products, not because we didn't care for the people or care for the animals, but for two reasons. Number one, the products are too expensive. Mm. Number two, they just didn't work. None that we could find would work. So if somebody wanted eco-friendly products, they had to provide the, the, the cleaning products. Now, because of Campino, we've developed our own brand, our own line of products, Casa Polita eco-friendly cleaning uh, line of products that cleans everything in the house. And we even got a hand soap and a laundry soap. And that is entirely safe to be used around Campino. Here's some of the products here. This one, for example, is the uh, Blast Shine. As you can see, I'm freely spraying it 
around them. Entirely safe. Very, very minor um, uh, odor to it. It's a pleasant, fresh odor, mm -hmm. but very, very safe for them. And we have a, a, quite a line. I've only got two or six products there right now. We probably have about 13. Um, this is our, our latest one. It's a barbecue cleaner. It's the best degreaser you can ever get for your barbecue. I'm getting nothing but great uh, response on that. Um, my clients love our products and our staff do too because they say it's, it's not uh, uh, hard to work with. It's easy to work with when they apply it and, and clean and it's not hard on their lungs. So Beautiful. Uh, so that's how Campino's work. We had to do something that we can clean around this guy. So. Well, thank you, Campino, for keeping us safe and promoting organic quality products that do work and aren't too expensive. We appreciate you, Campino. And you're looking good while you're helping us so much there, buddy. Appreciate you. So since we know the story a little bit more, as I said, that was going to be my, my next question to go into. You were in the policing and you retired. You wanted to give back to your community help in any way that you can you put your clients first your staff and then the community at large so I, we love all that community is the whole point of this is to really enrich the lives of one another through connection interesting people and quality information so I, I, rather than going into the story since you already delved into that a little bit let's talk about um a bit more of the products and services so i'm very much an audience member to you because i only know so much about casa Polita. so <clears throat> Let's list off some of the services. You said cleaning. Okay, so we know you take care of the cleaning. But you also said meal prep and, and a few other things. So I imagine that's on the concierge side of it. Yeah. What do you mean when you say concierge? For the person well, listening, what does that mean? Right. So um, I think, and, and I guess I'm taking one step back about how we develop. Like, I, I don't think I was looking at actually opening a cleaning company. That was not something I was thinking about. However, it's just something that happened naturally for me because I was an Airbnb host. I had a, a condo at, I had a condo at Friday Harbor, and I was really having a tough time getting a cleaning company that would be able to service everything an Airbnb needs, right? And... Um, a lot of it, like even meal prep, if my if my guests wanted some kind of meals, we were able to produce that for them. Or if they, they wanted a tour, we were able to set that up for them. So it was all, all about my 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 um, uh, Airbnb. The services came out as a result of that. And the first thing, the issue I had was with the cleaning of an Airbnb. That is the most important part of the Airbnb is the cleaning of it. Because Airbnb has very high standards when it comes to the quality and cleanliness of uh, and the staging of an Airbnb. So I really had a hard time finding a local company or a local cleaner that could do all that. And I found that they lacked in three uh, key areas. One was flexibility, okay? If I needed a person last minute, or if I needed a change, a last minute change, or anything of that nature, they couldn't do that. The other one was reliability. And as an Airbnb host, you really had to rely on a cleaner that was going to be there when they say they're going to be there. Mm -hmm. Or they, or even for my house, they would want to switch days on me and things like that. And then, of course, was the quality. I mean, Airbnbs require high quality cleaning. And I found all the companies, they would either miss one or two, some, all three. They could not satisfy those needs. So, um, I said, why not start a company? I'll do it on my own. And I only had one client, me. I cleaned my Airbnb and I cleaned my house. I had them clean my house. And from there we grew. And that's where the other services started coming in because people started to trust us more. Okay. They became to rely upon us for everything else. The one lady I had on the phone just before we were interrupted, um, she, she, she's out of town and she does have a place in, um, in Midhurst. And um, um, she she's asked she asked me to have somebody check the house when they were away, get the mail, get parcels at the door, bring them into the house, go in the house, make sure there's no flooding. Okay, then like I say, with the air, with with uh, other places where we're cleaning once a week, uh, more of a housekeeping of thing, even doing their laundry for them uh, because they're they're they may be elderly or or have mental health issues. They couldn't do these things. So we would go in and do that. And now I, I partnered with a, with a company that we can actually provide um, a, a fresh chef-made food 
with, mm. with low sodium, healthy meals, as opposed to those fast food establishments that they were normally eating at or uh, frozen foods they were buying at the grocery store, which were high in sodium content. So um, we really got into that. And then, like I say, they, they, they trust us more and more. They need somebody to paint. I have now, we don't do it ourselves. We have subcontractors that do that, but subcontractors that I know, that I vetted, that I know they're going to get it done and they'll do it right away. Same thing as a plumber and electrician. If someone was just need, in need of a customer, or sorry, a plumber or, to, or electrician and want it tomorrow and you were to make calls, you're not really going to be able to get one. With my clients and my subcontractors, when I my clients have an issue, I call them and I'll get somebody there that next day, if it's an emergency, I'll get them there that day. Um, so we really go out of our way in helping our clients. These aren't things we necessarily advertise, but when they say to me, they'll say, Joe, I need a, a fence built in my backyard or I need a deck, my deck built. I'll, I got you covered. We'll get you somebody on that right away. And so that's the concierge part of it. So you are kind of... <clears throat> Not kind of, it seems very much like you are this. The cleaning side with the products, that's your bread and butter, if I'm understanding. And then the concierge is basically like, we will come here, we will clean your house, make sure that's all good, proper products. But anything you need outside of that, come talk to me. There's a high likelihood that I'll be able to connect you with that person, get them here last minute. And so you have this suite of additional services from these subcontractors that you have availability to so you're basically like the connection between the client and them, the middleman for these concierge services. Exactly, Jeff. And, and I, like I'll give you another example. And, and actually, I didn't even use a, a subcontractor for that. We did that in-house. One of my weekly cleans, they, they were moving. They got a new place. I had a team go over and completely clean the interior of their new house that they were moving into. While I had a team over there doing that, I had a team at the original home help packing boxes and, and organization and junk removal that they weren't taking. And then we had all their products or all their boxes and furniture moved to their new location. And while that's being done, we're now cleaning the old place. They didn't have to do anything. Logistically, we had a logistics manager in there to manage it all. So they had no stress whatsoever. And when we get that, when I hear that, and we just did a deep clean for somebody who landed up in the hospital last week, the, the family were literally in tears when they saw us go in and what we did for that place, you know, and that's what, that's what it's all about. Cause if that, then that's going back to my days of being a police officer. I've been in situations like that. I know the, the especially with mental health, it's really, really a tough one, the hoarding and that kind of stuff. It's really uh, tough on the family and, it, and even on the, on the person themselves, they don't like living in that situation. But when we go in there and we do something, even just a little bit, to see the the the, the joy it brings to them, that that's that's what makes it important to us. And that's it the really staff, part right there. Yeah, yeah, that's the that's where you get your cup filled right up, right? Is yeah. that connection with your clients? So I find that very interesting. The concierge services part. Um, I deal with entrepreneurs all day, every day. Been doing this for many many years, and it's not something that comes up all that often. So, uh, you know, you're, you're one business that provides a whole network of uh, potential services. So is that on your website or how do people find out what, um, uh, yeah, really, I guess the easiest way to say it is what services, uh, all the services that in, it entails, what's the best way to say this? All the services that you provide, is that available on a website somewhere, a pamphlet, so that they know if I can think of it, Joe's probably got it. Yeah, so that I would recommend to everybody to download our um, our app. You can get an app through Google oh. Google um, Play, I believe it is, and on the um, uh, the Apple Store. Uh, download our app. All our services are on there. Our products aren't there yet, um, but they will be available for sale there. We've got some for sale on Amazon, uh, Shopify. Uh, but also our website, www.casapolita.ca. Um, that site that we've got up and running right now is, um, is just a temporary website. We should have our, um, our finished website completed by next week. All our services will be listed in there. Also, the stores section where all the products that we sell um, 
are, are also going to be there. So you can order your products. It's free shipping anywhere in Simcoe County and um, um, shipping outside those areas. But we're really predominantly in Simcoe County right now. Mm -hmm. we're, we are expanding our services also to, to York and uh, sort of the GTA. But mm -hmm. uh, locally here, we're, we service Simcoe County, a lot of people in Midhurst. Um, yeah, so just go to our website, uh, Wonderful. download our app. That's where you'll see the um, specials that we have coming out. We always have something coming out. Uh, right now, we're going to have our spring uh, special coming out, which will be uh, once we clean the place completely, we completely deodorize it with our um, our own brand of eco-friendly deodorizing spray, also with an ozone generator generating ozone gas within the in the place to, to, to fully disinfect it, freshen it up. And then every bathroom, every bathroom in the kitchen will be left with one of our hand soaps. And these, nice. these hand soaps, this is where we give back that every hand soap that we sell, um, uh, a dollar is donated to our uh, charity group for this product, which is Glowing Hearts. Which is, we know them well. Sarah's a wonderful human being. Sure, exactly. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, we don't, for every uh, bottle of our hand soap that we sell, we give a dollar uh, to Glowing Hearts. And that's wonderful. Wonderful. Well, that's, I, I'm very happy to hear that it's on the app, it's on the website, because it seems like you have more services than the average business because you have so many connections and uh, so many people that help in your organization. It's nice to know. Because so many times we there's a business out there and we don't know half the things they do. So mm -hmm. I'm very happy that you have that organized, easily accessible um, for people to see so that you can help and impact as many people as you can. Something that I'm curious about is we ask a couple fundamental questions on the show. Uh, one of them is the why question, like why did you get into it? You already shared that with us. But another one is myths and misconceptions. We're a big believer in accurate information can incredibly impact a life. If you have inaccurate information inside of you, and now you're going to be making decisions based on inaccurate information, which is going to lead then less than optimal decision making, and it's going to veer your life off track, probably a little bit at least. So if we have accurate information inside our head, we can make better decisions and, and therefore live a better life. So we like to clear up as many myths and misconceptions as we can with our real estate agents, our roofers, our psychotherapists, our recovery coaches, um, we like to really ask, what are people thinking out there that could be inaccurate that our experts on the show, like yourself, could clarify? So are there any myths and misconceptions that come to mind about the cleaning side of your business or the concierge side of your business that someone out there is thinking that maybe is holding them back from reaching out to a company like yours? Anything that comes to mind that you can clarify for us? Yeah, I think I think. Um, the big one for me is uh, the cost. Um, people think that the cost of uh, hiring a company like us, a bigger company, as opposed to a freelance cleaner, um, is very much more expensive. Well, it's not much more expensive on its face. We are more expensive than the independent that may charge you, you know, $30, $35 an hour. But where it could become expensive, a lot of these cleaners are not insured. They're not WSIB certified, okay? If they're in their house and they fall down the stairs and break the leg and they're not WSIB certified, they are not uh, insured, you're on the hook. Your mm. insurance company is on the hook. And that's where it becomes exceptionally expensive. Um, it, it becomes where your insurance companies now have to get involved and you've got a claim. You may have a $2,000 deductible. And that then becomes an issue. And then, and then even on the WSIB side of the house, uh, being an ex-police officer, and I know the, the, the rules there, is um, when they investigate that, they're going to say, well, they're not WSIB certified, yet um, you have them coming here every week doing cleaning for you. They work for you. Why are you not certifying them? Well, they're an employee of yours. Maybe there's a contract that says differently, but still, the, the protection uh, for these people that are going in that don't have the insurance or anything of that nature, well, then then that becomes your problem. And with mm. Gas and Lita, I cover every base. You're going to have zero problems. You're not going to have any stress. I don't want to create stress away from you. I want to take stress away from you. 
and and like I say with the moving and, and all of that that's what makes me happy the most you don't have to lift a finger you don't have to have any stress involved because moving is a very stressful thing sure. and we don't it's not stressful for us because we, we actually enjoy doing it we're not doing it for ourselves probably if I did it for myself I would be stressed but when we do it for other people it's we actually enjoy doing it we'd love to see how relaxed they are right so I, I don't think you're going to get the customer service that you get when you when you hire a company like ours. So that's the other part that makes it more affordable. It's value, I believe. Yeah. And we're big believers in values. I have this uh, quote that I like to share with our team as, as we're quite a large team. Uh, to So to remember these things, that the business that provides the most value wins. So it's not about the price. It's about continually stacking more value. But I really like the point that you made about cost because... Uh, a lot of our um, messaging, whether it's through print or digital or the podcast, they go to very affluent communities. So we have higher ticket service items. Those are the businesses we typically work with, um, high ticket service items. So the cost is something that comes up a fair bit. And it's, it's, a, it's a common myth across many industries, but it really is that penny wise, pound foolish old adage to save that few bucks, you're increasing your risk, right? So uh, often humans are just, a, a, um, they're just assessing their financial investment, but not their risk tolerance. So if I save 10% by going to that independent, I may have increased my risk significantly and I may get away with it for a little while, but you set yourself up for if that thing does happen, now you're in trouble, like not having car insurance. Yeah, you'll save 300 bucks a month. I don't really enjoy paying 450 a month for car insurance, but I know because I have been in two accidents before, I was very thankful when I had that car insurance. So it's that, it really is that penny wise pound foolish. I, I like that you address that, but also the value side of it. Um, when, when businesses really put a very intentional effort forward to care for their clients it is a noticeable difference than the business who's trying to make a sale and from our impression of you and seeing what you guys have been doing out there watching you guys for a little while it very much seems like that is the case and certainly here again today um, the way you speak about your business is very much client satisfaction orientated and community enrichment so i love that pivoting a little bit joe as we like to know about the person uh, not just the business. We want to know about the business and services because people may need those things right now, or they may have never heard of a business like this before. So now I have more options, but we like to get to know our people. We all live in the same community. We're all playing in the same sandbox. So we like to ask the entrepreneurs on the show, what do they get up to for fun? Most of them will say in some sense, well, I built this business. I love what I do, which I'm very thankful and grateful that there are so many people out there that love what they do because I think there's a huge portion of people that do not like their work and that's a tragedy. But I know you get up to things outside of your work. So what does Joe get up to when not working that you really enjoy? Yeah, these days, Jeff, honestly, uh, I enjoy going to work. I enjoy- I knew it. I knew it. I don't, but it's I all knew good. It. Give me something else, Joe. Right. You got to do something else, man. Right. So I do enjoy getting together with family and my friends even if it's just for a pint at the local, uh, at the local uh, watery hall um, once a week, if I get that much, uh, and then maybe having people over for dinner and a movie uh, and spending time with uh, Campino's not our only one. I got Campino and I've got two African greys and they're a handful, trust me. As you can are, see, the, are only they reason, the only reason he's here right now is he invited himself because you told me that screaming has got to stop and that, yelling of it i said the only way that's going to happen is he's got to be on the show because that's what he wants to do right he wants the fame but i got to tell you super well behaved gorgeous looking bird and what are african greys are they parrots as well yes they're the most intelligent and believe me they are they're smarter than i am so you have three parrots in the house yeah and a couple of dogs which i share with my neighbor we've got we've got five dogs between us and i don't know which ones are mine they, they come and go as they please like today i don't have any <laughs> tomorrow i may have two <laughs> and when you said uh, we have uh, two other birds is that uh, a family you got kids they are my kids i, I live with, with my uh 
with my babies right here and uh, they're a lot of fun and uh I, when I retired, I, I wanted, when I knew when I retired, I wanted to get in and get a couple of birds. Uh, I always liked them. Um, I'm, I'm a lot, I love pets. Uh, yeah. Obviously. Um, that's why we're going to be coming out with a pet line of products next year. <laughs> Stay tuned Very for that. Cool. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, so I love that, man. Uh, there is just something. It's really hard to quantify or to put into words our connection with animals yeah. you know an animal lover right away yeah. and there is just something special about i can't tell you what it is exactly but i have had been lucky enough to have a couple of pugs myself that i raised from little babies and they're no longer with us but they were with me for 11 years and i don't have kids um, i'd like to think i have some pretty great relationships out there with humans but it was a whole different thing raising these two pugs them needing me that way emotionally i did not know that dogs were so developed like they knew when i was down they knew how to comfort me i didn't have to say anything it's incredible the connection two different species that don't really have a great way of communicating with each other can so well communicate with each other uh, yeah. It's pretty, it's pretty magnificent. And it, and it does not surprise me at all. Your love for your birds. Uh, we have bird lovers out there, horse lovers out there, cats, dogs. Uh, it does seem to be like humans love their animals. So I think that's a very special thing. I also think we can learn a lot from animals, yes. their, their lack of judgment, their lack of insecurities, their authenticity. I've taken a few pages out of my pugs books. I think they've made me a better human personally. If you ask my family and friends, they will tell you certainly that those pugs softened me up. I think I was a little too hard before those dogs. But um, no, I love that you share that with us. Outside of the fun, uh, Joe, I don't know if you took a look at the questionnaire, but this is one of our more important questions for sure, as we really get a chance to not only know the human, but a little bit more about the reality of being a human. I like to give a little context before, we, uh, before I ask this question is, we like to talk about hard things and doing hard things and sharing our trials and tribulations with one another as that is a vital part of being a human. But I think it goes beyond just sharing a vital part of being a human. Why is it vital? I think our hardships, our challenges in life give us the opportunities to grow and become more valuable human beings. I think they give us the opportunity to learn more about ourselves and in becoming more valuable impact our world at a greater scale. I think too often we find ourselves embarrassed or ashamed of our hardships and I think we keep them down and I don't think we share them as much as we should. I don't think there should be an embarrassment there. I think they should be, those scars should be worn as, as badges of honors. I like to say, so we like to ask our guests on the show, are there any trials and tribulations, hardships that you've been through that probably sucked in the moment as when we're doing something hard, it usually doesn't feel good. Hence being hard probably sucked in the moment, but years later, when you look back on it in hindsight, you can say confidently, I wouldn't remove that experience from my life because that is an invital ingredient to who I am today. Anything come to mind? Absolutely. I mean, it's it's hard. To, I mean, as a police officer of 35 years. Um, wow, that's a long I, time. I, I did experience PTSD. And I'll tell you, it's... Uh, it's no joke. It's no joke. It's, it's, it's still a battle today. I still have, I still wear the wounds. I don't, I don't wear it as a badge of honor. And actually I'm kind of surprised I even brought it up, but the way you were talking about that, that's very deep of what you said, but so true. And everything you said is absolutely true. Would I change anything at that time? Yeah, I would have changed it. I would have never went into policing when I say it now, when I say it then, but now when I look back and see the person it has made me become, um, and what I've learned from it, it's phenomenal. Um, I Luckily, I had a great mentor, and I, I do want to mention him, uh, Bob Proctor. He's a... Um, uh, He's great. Yeah. I mean, I, Bob took me under his wings. He saw something in me 10 years ago that I didn't see. And uh, he took me under his wings, and um, I've learned a lot from that man. Uh, for those that don't know him, he's uh, in the blockbuster documentary, The Secret. Uh, mm -hmm. He's a self-help guru and one of the best, but beautiful man. I mean, I, I couldn't thank him and his wife, Linda, enough. They, what they've done for me, and she can, well, passed away two years ago, and she continues to to be somebody who I can talk to and bounce things off. And 
uh, about my business and which is very interesting because that's how Bob Proctor started off when he was in the fire halls, he started a cleaning company. And um, a lot of my ideas, apparently, uh, when I throw them at Linda to, to bounce off her, she says, Bob always talked about that. Bob said that. Bob said that. Well, he said, you know what? I says, I talk to Bob every day. Every morning, I call it coffee with Bob. And when I get up in the morning, I do my meditation that he told me to do at 530 in the morning with my coffee. I sit there in peace. And I'm sure he's talking to me because that's when I get my creative moments. And, um, and I don't think of the past. I just appreciate for what I am today, for what I went through to become the person I am today. And uh, that's why I have a soft heart for, for people with mental health issues, uh, post-traumatic stress. Um, any Anytime I get a phone call and I've got to go into those hoarding situations, I don't look at them uh, in that way. I look at them and saying, "I'm there's got to be something I can do here just to make them feel that much better today, you know? And that's what Bob always said, leave everybody with the impression of increase. When they walk away from you, there's gotta be something that you've, they've taken out of that, something positive that they've taken out of that interaction. And that's uh, really what, um, uh, yeah, that's really the, what I went through. But like you said, it's, it's nothing I would ever wish I hadn't done. Uh, at the time, if you would ask me, I would have said, yeah, I, mean, I didn't want to be there, but um, I got through it. I got through it with uh, good friends. Yeah, just everybody know you will get through those hard times. You may not think it. I didn't think I was, but trust me, I went through the worst and uh, I came out the other end. And I'm not trying to belittle anybody else with what they're going through. I'm sure it's the worst, right. to them, but they will get through it as well. Just set yourself some high goals get the right people in your life and you'll get through it. Yeah. I'm a better person for it. It's a beautiful story, man. I mean, I appreciate it. I think these conversations are starting to be had more often, but they are still lagging behind with how much I think human beings need it. I do um, addictions counseling on the weekend at a, at a great facility called Cornerstone Recovery out on um, uh, in Barrie on uh, Dunlop street there and in, in new market on Mulock. And I only came to now teaching people how to get through sobriety and live better lives physically, mentally, and soulfully, because I had to go through that myself. Yeah. I saw my family go through that. I saw my friends go through that. <clears throat> it was a hell that I wouldn't want anybody to go through, but I wouldn't remove any of those experiences. Some led to people passing away which obviously is very difficult, but all of those things were, I could have looked at as a burden and it would have limited me, or I could have chosen to present it as an opportunity to myself to learn something, become more valuable. And now it's turned into uh, a huge sense of fulfillment in my life, very rewarding to help teach people on the weekend, connect with them on such a deep level um, that it's, it's totally transformed my life. So that's why we like bringing it up because it is part of everybody's life. When you said you, it was the worst for you, it, it was. If you're saying it, all problems are relative. Mine was the worst for me. Hers is the worst for hers. And all of our problems are significant and important to us. But by sharing them with one another, we provide a bridge of connection to um, through kind of our, our growth in a way, our suffering in a way. So I appreciate you sharing that, Joe. It's a great story. And uh yeah, I imagine it was very challenging, but looking back, saying that you would not remove that from your experience just goes to exactly what we're talking about, to um, highlight our hardships, to foster a deeper connection with ourselves and other people. So I do appreciate it. Back to business before I shed a tear over here, as uh, people know me to get emotional on these shows, uh, which I don't think is a bad thing at all, but I want to keep it together. About your business. If there was one thing that you wish the audience knew about Casa Polita in particular, what would that one thing be? Wow. There's so many moving parts to it. Um, Let's distill it down to the most valuable thing. What could it be? I, I just think it's, I, I'm just trying to, I, so, I mean, this is something I, I talk to the staff about all the time, especially the manager is it's about the client and 
I want them not to just go in and clean their house or have their house painted. I want them to build a relationship with the client. Let them know who you are. Just like we're doing this here, I want them to do that with them. Okay. Mm -hmm. I want I want us to to be a help to the community in many 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 ways. Um, so if it's if it's just to um, call them up, especially an elderly person living alone, just calling them up and just seeing how are you doing today. We haven't seen you in a week. Just want we're not here till there till next week. I just want to check in on you. Everything okay? Anything you need specifically next week? It's more about that. It's something where 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 it it doesn't cost anything to do that, and it's not something we're going to charge for that. You know, it's just something we we want to do to maintain that connection with them because we want them to be comfortable with us because we're in their home. That's their safe space. And and uh, I've had cleaners most of my uh, adult life. And I never had that connection with them. And it was, it was too transactional. I yeah. want to make it more, um, we're, we're family, they're helping them out. Um, that, 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 that's, they can rely on us, whatever they need. Uh, we're a big team. Uh, we bring people in that, uh, that they need extra help. And, and, and we'll reach out to the community organizations if it is mental health issues or that. If there's a concerns that we have, we will reach out. Um, and that's, I think that's a lot to do with my, my policing background in that I'm, I'm, I'm more cognizant of the fact of the help that's, that's available that some people may not know about. Right. So I, I guess if I had to boil it down to, because that's where I get the enjoyment. I don't get paid from the company. <laughs> I, don't get, I don't get nothing for it. I just get, I just get, I just get lots of work to do. <laughs> I get my enjoyment to see the clients happy and, and the staff too. I hire a lot of the, my first um, full, full, first staff I hired, she was a, a, a woman that escaped Ukraine um, with, with the two children, with her two ch young children and the clothes on her back and made wow. her way to Canada. And you hear that story. And actually um, the magazine did a write up on her. Um, That's so cool. Yeah. Cause they asked me, we want to do an article on you. I said, no, I don't want an article on me. I want an article on this woman here. I said, that's something I don't think I could have done. Like, I've done a lot of things in my 35 years of policing, but if somebody invaded my country and I was forced to, to, to leave with, with my birds and the clothes on my back to a country that doesn't speak my language, I don't know if I could do that. So yeah. that's that's the thing that I uh, wanted to, to showcase for, for, for us joining your magazine. And, um, yeah. I love it. So really what I heard there was starting the conversation by caring first. It's simply yeah. what I, what my main takeaway was through all of those things, products and services and the way we can help you clean your house and all that. What I heard was the underlining theme of that is just caring for the human being that you come across right. in whatever way that you can. That's what I did for 35 years. I got paid no matter how many people I helped, right? It, it, when business when business and policing was good, that wasn't good, right? My business business is good. It's good. <laughs> All right. So I, I I was able to take that. Um, you know, uh, yeah, we worked harder. We didn't get much more. We didn't get any more money for it, but we helped a lot of people. Yeah, and then seeing the help that we did, and then you know, basically extrapolating that and bringing it to what I do today, it's still about helping people it's what they want and that's and bob always told me that he said that's the way you sell is you're not selling for you you're selling for them you're you're selling them something that they need and once you understand that selling is easy because it's not about me it's about them right so i'm not selling them because i'm trying to to make money i'm selling them because i'm trying to get them something that they need and that and, and that is the honest to goodness truth that that's why i'm doing what i'm doing it's because i want to help them with whatever it is they need if they don't need painting i'm not going to sell them a painting i'm not even going to talk about it your, your house looks beautiful but you know what maybe you need those popcorn ceilings taken off what, what is that something you, you're interested in well, okay great we can do that for you or do you want us to come in here and give you a good spring cleaning right now you know yeah yeah i love it bob proctor certainly uh, a great role model in my life too the one book i'm forgetting a few of the other books but one in particular that's left an impact on me it's it's titled not about the money 
obviously that's what he talks about all the time. But one of my favorites, Zig Ziglar, he, he says, uh, I bring this quote up a fair bit, especially with my team, other people in my life. You can have whatever you want in your life as long as you help enough other people get what they want in their life. And that's the underlining theme here. It's focus on helping other people. Two main reasons. One, it's a great business plan. You will grow your business if you focus on the needs of other people. But if you're just starting off and doing that and you're focusing on the money, that's okay. As long as you're out there helping other people, I think over time, uh, the new businesses especially will find how fulfilling it is, yeah. how rewarding it is to see the smile on somebody's face or, wow, your information or your products or services or your experience really brought my day up. I was down or it changed me in this way. Or now that I know that my trajectory has changed entirely, uh, money comes fourth, fifth, sixth down the priority list. Once you really start impacting people and you feel that feeling. So I, I love that. And we align with you quite a bit, Joe. What I want to know is how can people reach out to you? Yeah, I would just say get, uh, get our um, uh, new app downloaded. Um, you can reach us through there through the messaging system um, by sending a request uh, for more information. We answer within 24 hours. Um, you can call our office, 705, what is our number? 417-3254. Or our website at www.casapolita.ca. Number of ways to get us. Um, we're going, oh, if you want to come out and meet Campino Saturday, We'll be at Burnett's uh, Butcher Shop on Bryan Drive. Uh, it's his third anniversary. Um, that's our butchers. We used to go all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, we always go. And um, we're going to have our table set up there. Glowing Hearts Charity is going to be with us. Wonderful. We're going to be selling all of our products. And um, we just have to listen to, to what we got to say about our products. Come meet Camp. You know, we're going to have some giveaways, some draws. Uh, we'll even clean your cell phone with our best product, our seller, right there. We'll clean your cell phone for you, we'll give you samples, uh, get to talk to Campino. He likes walnuts. He likes almonds. He'll have a friend for life if you bring a one. Right, Campino? Wonderful. Well, if I run into Campino, I'll make sure to bring the almonds because I'm not a walnut guy, but I always got a bag of walnut uh, almonds with me to keep those uh, good fats in, in the body. Joe, it was a pleasure talking to you, man. You're yes. the, main, the main takeaways for me, and really, this is why we do this show, but not everybody connects on the same level. I had a feeling you would after talking to you on the phone. Um, my main takeaways is your commitment to increasing the quality of the lives of our local community. That's what I'm getting from all of your services that you provide, from all the different threads that you were pulling to talk about today, um, sharing more about your own life, and 35 years of policing, that's about giving back to the community. So I love that you're rooted in caring for other people. That's what we're trying to do on this show. And it was a pleasure talking to you, Joe. I appreciate you coming on. Thank you, Jeff. It was a pleasure doing this. We'll talk soon, Joe. Yes, sir. Have a good day. Thank you for listening to the Good Neighbor Podcast Neighbors. To nominate your favorite local businesses to be featured on the show, go to gnpmidhurst.com. That's gnpmidhurst.com or call 705-413-3775.